Woke up this morning in Lubbock, Texas. And the first thing that we're gonna do is pay our respects to the legendary Buddy Holly. And right outside the cemetery is this marker. It says, Buddy Holly historical marker, city of Lubbock Cemetery. Buddy Holly died at age 22 in a plane crash near Clear Lake, Iowa on February 3rd, 1959. Fellow musicians, Richie Valens and J.P. Richardson, otherwise known as the Big Bopper, were also killed in the crash. The funeral was held in Tabernacle Baptist Church, and he was buried in the city of Lubbock Cemetery on Saturday, February 7, 1959. Fans have traveled from up to 10,000 miles away to view Holly's final resting place. It is customary to place a guitar pick on the headstone so that the music lives on. When we first got here, we had no idea how big or how small the cemetery was gonna be. We took a chance, we turned right, and we saw this giant sign that says Buddy Holly. And right across from it, pretty close to the entrance to the cemetery is where Buddy Holly is buried. The wind always seems to pick up whenever we do these cemetery videos. Now, sadly, we had no idea that it was customary to bring a guitar pick. But this is beautiful. So many people have come and brought a whole bunch of things to leave here for Buddy. In loving memory of our own, Buddy Holly, September 7th, 1936 to February 3rd, 1959. Now, I'm sure you noticed his last name is not spelled how everybody knows it in the entertainment world. The real spelling, the original spelling is H-O-L-L-E-Y. You got a picture of him right there. A couple of different people have left different styles of sunglasses here for Buddy. But the closest ones that look like his sunglasses are the ones right there above the word memory. And then over here on the right hand side of the tombstone is the etching of a guitar. And surrounding it, different guitar picks, coins, wine bottle corks. See what I mean by the wind? Now, this is one of those locations, one of the graves that we've been wanting to visit for quite some time. In fact, whenever Jessica and I moved from Florida to California, the original plan, the original road trip, actually took us here to Lubbock. But once we got close to Lubbock, it was January, and they were calling for a pretty hefty snowstorm. So we had to quickly reroute our trip to California. So instead of coming up to Lubbock, we hit Roswell, which there was snow, went further south, and then made it straight out to California. So technically, this video, like so many other ones, about two and a half years in the making. I don't know if you can hear it, but somebody left a little toy phone on Buddy Holly's grave. It's making this chime noise. Now, about a month or so ago, we found ourselves actually in Clear Lake, Iowa. We visited the surf ballroom where Buddy Holly and Richie Valens and the Big Bopper played the last concert. Went to the airport and also went out to the middle of the field where their plane crashed. So in a way, this is kind of like coming almost full circle. Still need to visit Richie's grave and the Big Bopper. Well, right beside Buddy Holly was the final resting place of his father and his mother. His father's name was Lawrence, and his mother's name was Ella. Here's a closer look at his dad's tombstone, Lawrence O. Holly, November 4th, 1901 to July 8th, 1985. It says, to live in hearts left behind is not to die. He has gone on 
but he lives on in our hearts. His mother, Ella, August 29th, 1902 to May 20th, 1990, in memory of our mother, till we shall meet and never part. Now there are three houses here in Lubbock, Texas that we're gonna talk about that have an association with Buddy Holly. This one right here is the house that he grew up in where he spent his childhood, lived here with his family, his brothers. And this is also where he learned pretty much to play music, where he was living whenever he attended grade school and high school. A couple streets away over on 37th Street is where you'll find this house. Now, according to the city's website, back in 1957, this is where Buddy Holly and his family was living when That'll Be The Day became the number one song. It's a beautiful home. Right? Now, when we first drove by it, this one completely caught me off guard because no other house on this street looks like this. And that brings us to the third and final house here in Lubbock, Texas that has to deal with the history of Buddy Holly. Now there's a little plaque here on the fence. It's not that long, so I'm gonna go ahead and read it. It's kind of cool. It says the J.I. Allison house from the 1950s. Originally located at 2215 6th Street, this house was preserved to commemorate the songwriting of Buddy Holly and the Crickets. While at this home in 1956, Buddy Holly and original founding member J.I. Allison penned the hit song, That'll Be The Day. Now, I didn't know this. The song was inspired by a line from the John Wayne movie, The Searchers in a single near the top of the Billboard charts in September of 1957. Pretty wild. Out of the three houses here in Lubbock, Texas, this is probably the most well-known, probably the most visited, mainly because it's next to the Buddy Holly Center and Museum. The other two, a little lesser known, and they are private property, so if you do go to visit them, please be respectful. But look how pristine this looks. I feel like I went back in time. If we walk further down the sidewalk to the museum itself, recognize those big glasses, Buddy Holly's glasses. Of course, you know, they're not to scale, they're a lot bigger. But we saw ones just like this out in Iowa at the crash site. And there goes your hat. See? The wind. Here's another plaque, this time right next to the glasses, and it says Buddy Holly. Charles Hardin Buddy Holly was born in Lubbock on September 7, 1936. It goes on to tell about his life here and some of his musical accomplishments. But right down here at the bottom, February 3rd, 1959, during a three-week tour of the Midwestern United States, Buddy's chartered plane crashed after takeoff due to bad weather. There were no survivors, and Buddy Holly was only 22 years old. Now, if you want to take the moment to pause the video to go ahead and read this sign, go ahead. I'll wait. I'm really going nowhere. I just like saying that. Now just a quick heads up, here inside the museum, there's no photos, there's no video. They're actually pretty strict about it. They have signs all throughout the exhibit that say that it is a copyrighted and you cannot photograph, you cannot video, you can't do anything except for stopping and looking, which is kind of sad. They do have a small gift shop. And to be honest, the museum is rather small. There's a couple different furniture pieces of furniture, there's a couple items of clothing, there's guitars, but the thing that really got me, aside from the autographs, the signatures of Buddy Holly, is they actually have Buddy Holly's glasses that were found at the crash site in Iowa. They were held in an, in an evidence locker for quite some time. 
and then rediscovered and then end up here back where Buddy Holly grew up. Right? Kind of takes your breath away. It does. I'm loving this neon sign. Now, the museum was really cool. I don't agree with not allowing people to take photos or video because there's people from all over the world that are never going to be able to make it here and they want to see something like this. So restricting it only to people who show up here, don't really agree with it. I get it. I'm sure at some point somebody has gone in there and have taken video and taken pictures anyhow, which is why those signs are there. So whoever did that, thanks for ruining it for everybody else. It was pretty cool. But if you want my opinion, if you're coming to Lubbock, Texas, seeking out Buddy Holly sites, there's a lot more here to see than just the museum. So don't let that discourage you. For instance, right across the street, there's something pretty amazing. Now you may have noticed that behind me, Jessica was holding up this paper. The people at the museum were kind enough to give us this. It's a printout of the Holly family homes, the different homes that they lived in here in Lubbock, Texas, as well as there's a couple of New York addresses there. A lot of it's been burned down. A lot of it's been demolished. But the ones that we showed earlier are on this list. So that kind of makes me happy. Directly across the street from the Buddy Holly Center and Museum is the Buddy and Maria Elena Holly Plaza. Now this is something else. I've seen this statue of Buddy Holly online since they put it here. And I've been wanting to come here to visit it. So uh, this makes me really excited. It's a cool looking statue. A couple years ago, Jessica and I made the trip out to Tupelo, Mississippi, the birthplace of Elvis Presley. And they had something very similar there. That's what this reminds me of. Pretty darn fitting, if you ask me. Behind them, you can see these names on the wall. It says the Walk of Fame. And right below where it says Walk of Fame, it says Buddy Holly, 1936 to 1959. And here's a closer look at the statue. The detail is something else, right? You come down a little further. We got his guitar. And I realized from where I was standing, it's a little hard to read some of the names. Let's go ahead and take a look at a couple of these. And of course, the first one, right there in the center of your screen, Buddy Holly. Tanya Tucker's here, inducted into the Walk of Fame 1988. Waylon Jennings made it into the Walk of Fame in 1980. Right next to him, good old Roy Orbison, inducted into the Walk of Fame 1989. Mac Davis made it here in 1983. Here's one for the Crickets, made it into the Walk of Fame in 1986. There are a lot of names on this wall, and more than half of them I have never heard of in my life. Now I can guarantee you at some point, somebody's gonna say, wait a second, how do you not know these people? Well, I'm gonna walk it, and just take my time so you can see the different names and feel free to call out anybody you want. Pretty neat. Now, how cool is it that there's a street here in Lubbock actually named for Buddy Holly, Buddy Holly Avenue? Well, at this corner, Buddy Holly and 19th Street, there's a wall mural. Now, there are a ton of wall murals here in Lubbock, and they change constantly. But this one here is considered to be the official Buddy Holly mural. You can see him there, as well as the crickets. 
I think when it comes to murals here, this one has to be my favorite. I'm a big fan of the, the murals on the side of buildings that look like postcards, like old style postcards. I love them. At this point, we're just driving around Lubbock looking for murals. Now, I know that we're going to miss a few. It's a given. And even after we're gone, after this video comes out, there's going to be new murals that pop up. But this is kind of fun to just kind of walk the streets where Buddy Holly grew up. Just see this town as it stands today, walking history. Out of the three big murals that we found today, this is definitely the most vibrant, the most colorful, and well-kept. Probably because this is kind of on the outskirts of town. Man, that's cool. Look at that. And right there in the center of the B is Buddy Holly himself, the Cotton Club. Man, this is cool. The Tabernacle Baptist Church here in Lubbock, Texas, was the church that Buddy Holly and his entire family attended pretty much their entire life. While we we're out here taking photos, the pastor came out and asked what we were doing and we told him. He said, you know that Buddy Holly's last remaining brother just passed away within the past month or two. And he was still going to church here, here in his family. Buddy Holly's parents went here. Buddy Holly sang choir in this church. He was married in this church. Whenever he was back in town visiting family from being on tour, he would often come to service here with his family. And then after he died, this is where his funeral was held. Now, one of the hardest things was to try to track down a photo from Buddy Holly's funeral. It is darn near impossible. I mean, pretty much every photo we see is of the big bopper or somebody else. But the pastor was kind enough to let us inside so we can see where Buddy Holly's funeral was held. Well, in his church, and, and uh, he was married here, Aww. and uh, everything, baptized, and... Uh, it's all original still. Huh? It's all original still? Uh, well, actually, this here, from here forward, pretty much as it was. Uh, except they had put in new lighting and yeah. whatnot. But uh, from here back, it was all church right up until uh -huh. the foyer right there. Okay. And this place was packed. And, uh, you know, all the old pews are in storage up above. But I can, uh, I can, cool. I can turn the lights on. Mm -hmm. So they did do some renovation. So this could very well be where that photo was taken. I'm gonna walk up here towards the front. This is where his casket would have been for viewing. It's really hard to find any photo of Buddy Holly's funeral online. It's like it doesn't even exist. But this is where it was. With that being said, thank you for joining us on another adventure, another grim adventure, this time to Lubbock, Texas, the final resting place and the childhood home of Buddy Holly. Again, it's been about two and a half years in the making this video. Last time that we were coming through here, there was a major snowstorm. And today, it's a beautiful day. Until next time, happy Halloween. Wherever I come, I've had luck. It's come my way. Wherever I go, hard luck. Is that it stays? Good luck never stays a day. A bad luck's always coming my way.